All right. Good morning. It is Thursday. Photoflix family. And we are going to take a second to get connected. If you are watching the replay, which most of you are going to be watching the replay, what I need you to do is comment hashtag replay so that I can see who's watching. Um, I love to see names and faces, um, especially those who actually like take action and participate in these lives, these trainings. Um, you're the ones that I want to get to know. You're the ones that like are hungry. You're the ones who are ready to go and, and pursue your passions, chase your dreams, and you're willing to take the steps that you need to take. Um, and so I'm just super excited. If you are watching live, say hello. Um, this is going to be a good one, you guys. Um, so if you're watching live, the 30 of you who are, say good morning, hello, tell us where you're from, what you're doing right now. Um, we're just going to start and get this thing kicked off. Amber Brogdon is here. Tina Marie, Ashley Ammons, Alicia, Lauren, Jamie Gammon, uh, Katie, Tidra, Stacy, Caitlin, Lindsay, Angela, Kiana, Tracy, Ruby. Y'all, y'all are ready for this. I'm getting excited. Okay. Uh, who else is here? Michaela, Courtney, Katie Stevens, Haley, Zamara, Leanne, Samantha, Tammy, um, Alejandra, Leanne, Chrissy, April. Good morning, you guys. Um, so, um, the last, <laughs> uh, 24 hours, I have felt like I was on my deathbed, um, and I was, like, super nervous that I wasn't gonna be able to do this this morning, but I really felt like God was just telling me to, like, take a freaking break, slow down, and, um, get ready for this because this has been something that I've been wanting to talk to you guys about for a long time. It's been on my heart. Um, and so we're going to just dive right in. Sophia is here from Arizona. Tammy's here. Jennifer, Tammy, Monique. Hello. Caitlin Hall. Mary Sue. Hey friend, Katie. All right. Gang's all here. So this month in Photoflix, your BB coaching was the very beginnings of building the foundations to your business. Um, and we started with figuring out why you want to do this. Um, and a couple weeks ago, I went live and we did um, an extra ex exercise called Seven Levels Deep, where you basically get down to the root and the core of why you're truly doing this and why you want a business in the first place and why you want to be a photographer. Because um, it's not easy. <laughs> it looks easy from the outside looking in. And a lot of us started it that way, like saying like, oh, I can, I have a camera, I can snap a few photos. And then we go into business. <laughs> and then we invest a lot of money. And then somebody, you know, says something stupid to us, you know, whether that's another photographer or a family friend who's like, oh, you're so cute. Um, you little photographer, you there's millions of other photographers. Why are you doing this? Um, and then we kind of doubt, like, why, like, why am I doing this? I don't even know. Um, and so I'm hoping by now you guys have number one, done that assignment. Number two, um, you've written it down and has told somebody else, whether it's someone else in Vodaflix, somebody, one of your business besties, your husband, your mom, your best friend, um, because it's important. It's the thing you're going to hold on to. And then the second thing that I asked you guys to do is figure out what you want, your dreams, right? Um, and this is one of the things that, again, outside looking in, you're like, oh, yeah, I have dreams. Yeah, dreams are great. Um, but, but when you actually sit down, you know, with your notebook and do this exercise, lots of feelings start coming up right? And y'all, if you are a front row Baptist kind of gal, uh, and, and you hear something that is like, yeah, amen. That's me. I need you guys to say it. Give me some hearts, something. I know most of us are kind of like back row Baptist. We just kind of want to watch, observe, and like, you know, uh, 
just see, take it all in and then leave early. Um, but if you're one of the, like Alicia, I think it, you know, she, she's Pentecostal. She's like up in here. She's ready to amen and all the things. But if I say something that you're like, that's me, that's me. Yes, I get it. Other people are going to feel the same thing. Um, and so do some hearts comment, um, as I go through this, it also helps me know that I'm not like losing anybody. Okay. Um, so we sit down, we do the dreams lesson, you know, we figure out like, what do I want? What, what, uh, what do I want my life to look like? What do I want my relationship to look like? What do I want my business to look like? What do I want? Like, what do I want to feel like? And we start writing it down back row Catholic here. <laughs> um, uh, that's funny. There's probably a lot of you in here. Um, we start writing it down and you immediately start thinking, who the heck do I think that I am? This is pipe dreams. This is embarrassing. Anyone else? This is never going to happen. This is bonkers. This is stupid. Um, and, and you write it down and then you close up your notebook and you're just like, okay, now let's focus on my to-do list today. Anyone else? Here's the thing, you guys. Um, dreams are something that you have to do not only for your business and, and not only like, I want to make six figures. That's, that's, we're more than just that. Dreams are something that, number one, you didn't necessarily think up on your own. And whenever I realized that, it gave myself um, the peace and the freedom to do it a lot. Um, and so today what I'm going to talk about um, is basically the three reasons you need to stop feeling embarrassed for the things that God has put inside of you. Because here's the just the basic truth. Your dreams are really your innermost desires. Dreams sometimes get a bad rap because we can dream like physical dreams when we go to sleep at night and we dream and then we wake up and we're like, where? But, or we'll watch a Disney movie and it's like your dreams, a wish, your heart makes, whatever. Like it's cute, right? But here's the, here's the truth. Your dreams are the desires God almighty himself put inside of you. The guy that made the heavens and the earth, the guy that rose Jesus from the dead, like that God is the, the same God who did all that. He's the same God that put those desires there, put those dreams there. And I, I wanted to do this video because it's like, we have to stop pushing those dreams down as pipe dreams. We have to stop setting those, like writing them down at the beginning of our notebook, like I have done for the last two years and close it and not look at it again, because you're just freaking embarrassed by it. And you don't want anybody to see it. Just saying it out loud is obnoxious, right? So we're going to start. And, and if you're a believer in here, you're in for a treat. Um, if you're not, welcome to church. Um, we are going to start with the very first reason why you need to stop apologizing for your dreams. And that is, write this down, those dreams aren't yours, they're God's. Write that down, highlight it, put some stars. Y'all know how I feel about highlighter stickies and stickers and all the things. Those dreams are not yours, they're God's. And whenever I can wrap my mind around the fact that like I'm too small to dream on my own. I'm way, I'm not smart enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm like, I'm, I am just dust 
to do this on my own. And so who am I to think that these desires just happened? They didn't. They came from God himself. And the cool thing is that all of us have different dreams. Why? Because God has different purposes for his children. God has different wills and different journeys and different things for his children, which is to fulfill his overall purpose for the world. Um, in 2020, last year, literally 12 months ago, this was my 2020 journal. I know you know about it. If you watch the lesson, especially I wrote down and here's just proof that like, we don't know what we're doing. We're not smart enough to know what we're doing in my journal. And I, I, if I remember right, I said this in the lesson, whenever I wrote down my dream, I put, where is it? Where are you? Here it is. Um, I put the very last thing, very last thing. Where is it? Where is it? Right here. It says, I grew my team to five and it was the best decision ever. Where did that come from? Like, you guys, 12 months ago, I had two courses and it was me and Lauren Haddo. That was it. Me and Lauren Haddo had two courses. We were doing life just fine. I was running this business just fine with me and Lauren, my tech guru like us together like we always joke us together we make one solid like entrepreneur like one solid business owner like us together and for whatever reason whenever I sat down and I was like god like what do I want what do I want what do I want what do I want that was one of the things that I wrote down I grew my team to five and it was the best decision ever y'all that is like proof right then and there I had no clue that I needed a team of five no idea, but God did. God knew. He knew 30 years ago before I was even born that I would be sitting here doing this, talking to you, and have a team of five who now help me do this mission and calling that I feel on my heart. Because I can't do it by myself. Because I'm not that smart. I'm not that talented. I'm not that great. God knew. And, and it, when we can wrap our minds around you know, and it says right here in Isaiah 64, 8, you are the potter, we are the clay, we are the work of your hand. We are just a blob of clay, you guys. But like God, the potter, is the one telling the clay what to look like, how big you're going to be, how the, 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 you know, the creases in the clay. Like when we can wrap our minds around the fact that these are not our own dreams, these are not our own desires, these are God's, we can stop apologizing for it. We can tell our, you know, our friends that if we share this with and they're like, oh, thank you. We don't have to like, we don't have to, we don't have to minimize that because it's the God of the universe who put that inside of us. Um, Psalm 37, four says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And if we read that slowly, delight yourself in the Lord, that's the first thing we have to do, which means we have to have a relationship with him. We have to get in the word. We have to surround ourselves with other believers. We have to like actually have a relationship with him so that we can understand his dreams that he has for us. And once we do, and we put those two things together, it will be done for us. And I have witnessed it over and over and over again, you guys. This is not just something that happens. It's a dream and then you create goals and you do the goals and your dream comes true. No, God already knows. He already knows. He already He's already got the doors he wants to open for you. He already has the doors he's going to shut for you. But first things first is you have to get out of the news, get out of the social media, and get in the word. I'm preaching to myself, you guys. Because once we do that, once we delight ourselves in him, which means we just spend some time with him like a friend, 
He's going to give us those desires. He's going to, he's going to give us those dreams, dreams that we didn't even know we wanted. Desires we had no clue we even wanted because we're just clay. We're just a blob of clay. We are not that smart. We are not that special, but God makes us that way. Which me leads me to my second reason you need to stop apologizing for your dreams. And it's simply this. When you are in pursuit of what God wants, you will be at peace. I'll read that again. When you are in pursuit of what God wants, those dreams that he put in you, when you pursue them wholeheartedly as fast as you can, and you pursue them with vulnerability and courage, you will be at peace, and it won't make any sense. For example, in 2018, we were building the house that I'm sitting in right now. We were homeless because we were building it. We already sold our house. So we were all five of us, all three boys, plus me and Thomas living in my old bedroom in my parents' house. I had, I, I had just started this photography business. So I had a little money, um, which helped us build this house. Um, and we were, we felt complete. We had three boys. They were healthy. We were happy. We built this house for three kids. There was a, about three days where I felt the Lord put on my heart that we needed another baby. And it didn't make sense because we sold all of every single baby thing we ever had. We gave it away. We sold it because we were moving out of our house. And I told Thomas, I'm like, babe, I have this desire put inside of me that like, I want another baby. I need another baby. I know it doesn't make sense. We already have three babies under three. Like this doesn't make sense, but like, I can't stop thinking about it. I can't sleep. I can't function on other things. I can't pick out our hardware for our house. I can't do anything else because I feel this like crazy desire to have another baby. And he goes, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Maybe you should pray about it a little bit more. Are you sure? Because poor Thomas supporting, you know, three under three and me. And he goes, okay, here's what we're going to do. I don't, he, he literally said, and I don't know if he's watching this right now, but he literally said, I don't have these dreams and desires. I don't have that yet. But if you do, I'm going to just like trust you. And you know what? We're just going to like give it to God um, cause we had some trouble getting pregnant with, um, the twins. And he's like, you know what, if this is God's will, it's going to happen. He's like, I'll, you know, how I'll, I'll do my part. Um, and so I was like, I know this doesn't make sense. I know we're homeless. We really don't need to be pregnant under my parents' house with three under three. Like, I know this doesn't make sense. I know we don't have money for another baby, whatever. Um, but about two weeks later, found out I was pregnant. And, um, I was at such peace, even though it didn't make any sense because God put those desires in my heart. God is the one who put those things in my heart because he needed to fulfill his will for my life. And so Philippians 4, 7 says, do not be anxious about anything. <laughs> Instead, pray about everything. I'm going to read that again. Philippians 4, 7, do not be anxious about anything. Anyone else struggle with anxiety? Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will protect your heart and mind. And the reason why I'm even saying this is because I feel as though... Um, a lot of us are living in anxiety. We're living with anxious hearts. We are living with the unknown of the world. We are living with like, I don't know what to do. When you start feeling that way, you need to pursue what God wants for you. And when you do that, it, it I mean, it says it right here, you will be at peace. 
which is another reason we have to stop apologizing for your dreams because again, God is the one who puts them there. And if you just listen and stop filling up your ears with the noise of Instagram, the noise of TV, the noise of the news, the noise of like whatever this new clubhouse it's like a new thing to just like fill up your ears when God is just saying like, pursue me and what I want for you. And I will give you everything that you want. You don't even know what you want. I will give it to you. Right before I posted this live, I posted a song called Spirit Lead Me. And it was something that um, every year I kind of have like a song of the year. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, how like some people have like a word of the year. Uh, I have a song of the year. Last year it was Bruno Mars, um, Uptown Funk. The, the, the phrase that says, don't believe me, just watch. It just stuck with me and my mastermind girls. Y'all know how I feel about Bruno. <sighs> Love him. And that song just like pumped me up for the year. And it's literally ever, it was like what I needed at that season of my life. Um, this season, it was around October, I was like, what's my year, what's my song of the year, what's my song of the year, and I was like, Lord, like, help me figure out the song of the year, and the song came up, and I said, this is it, um, and one, there is certain lyrics that really stick out to me, and I'm gonna read them really quickly, um, if I can, and again, once we get off this live, if you never heard the song, go check it out, um, so one of the lyrics says, uh, I think it's a verse two. It says, it felt like a burden, but once I could grasp it, you took me further, further than I was asking. Yeah, like that. This is this, these lyrics right here. It felt like a burden. Does my desires, the things that I wanted to get pregnant, to have a successful photography business, to teach other photographers one day, to have this like brand new program called Photo Flix. When I, when I brought this to my team, my team was like, oh, what else, Brandy? What else are you going to make us do? Um, Lauren, Ashley, Katie, Jackie, like they're all on here, I'm pretty sure. And they can attest to that. It's like, I have, it's like, I have this idea and then I, and then I feel like I burden everybody else. But here's the lyrics. I just like, I hold on to these lyrics. It says, it felt like a burden. But once I could grasp it, you took me further, further than I was asking. And y'all, like, again, I'm sure we all have these stories, but it is so true. Once you understand those dreams and desires come from God and you can stop apologizing for it and you can just <laughs> grasp what he's trying to get us to do, God is going to take you so much further than what you ever thought was possible in your life. Who can like, who has a testimony like that? It's like, oh, I had this like dream of being a photographer. And then like three months later, you're a fully booked out wedding photographer. Like how, like I, I hear these stories in my mastermind girls and they tell me this like at the retreats. And I'm like, it's crazy. It is crazy what God does when we just like submit and be like, here's the desires that you have for me. Let's do it. Let's go. I'm freaking out. I have no idea what I'm doing. But let's go. Um, and so, again, that verse says it felt like a burden. But once I could grasp it, you took me further, further than I was asking. And simply to see you, it's worth it all. And I think that is something that God allows for us to do is... Um, Sometimes he gives us these desires so that we can do it and then we can see him because he just showed off big time. Sometimes we can't see God. Sometimes we can't feel God. Sometimes we just like have no idea what he's doing. But when he puts these desires inside of you and then they happen, what what's the first thing we do? Like, my God, like, look what you did. I don't know what I'm doing, but you do. And I feel like it's, it's, it's sometimes he gives us those desires just so we can see him, which is really, really cool. Um, and then one last reason you need to stop apologizing for your dreams, for having those desires, um, 
is that you have to stop wasting those that precious time because we aren't promised time here on earth. Like God promises a lot of things. He promises us, you know, heaven if we're believers. He promises us peace. He promises us all these things, but we're not promised time. We're not. We are not promised time here on earth. And a lot of you guys know that just um, last month, we lost a Photoflix member, a mastermind alum. Her name was Ashley Falcon. And at the retreats, she had hopes, desires, dreams. But unfortunately, just a few months later, she went home. And I'm just here to encourage you that you do not have all the time in the world, as much as we don't want to think about that, as much as we, I mean, I'm sure some of us here lost someone this year due to COVID, due to just natural causes, due to sickness, due to accidents, to diagnosis. But you guys, like, you cannot wait to do these assignments. You cannot wait to take time to, to dream. You cannot wait anymore because we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised another hour. And God wants to use you for his will and his purpose and those desires and those dreams that he has for you. It's time for you to start taking action and pursue them and let God show off. And here's another piece of encouragement is you don't have to wait to have it figured it out. Figured out. I certainly don't have it figured out. I can't tell you how many times I'm like on the phone with my team. I'm like, I'm just over here trying to figure out my life. You don't have to have it figured out. God has it figured out. You'll probably never have it figured out. But he doesn't ask you to figure it out. He just asks you to pursue him, lean on him, and let him do all the work. That's it. So, um, one last verse, actually two last verses that I want to share with you guys, write these down. You can go back, you can look at them later. You can, um, one thing that I like to do is, uh, I have the Bible app on my phone and you can just simply put these in. I like to like read the message version sometimes. Um, sometimes it's just a little bit more understand, understanding for me. Um, uh, but it's Proverbs three, five through six says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't try to figure out everything on your own. Don't do it. You're clay. You're a blob of clay. Don't try to figure it out on your own. Listen to God's voice in everything you do and everywhere you go. He is the one who will keep you on track. It says it right here. Don't try to figure it out on your own. You are merely clay. Let the potter mold who you are supposed to be and where you're supposed to go. Jeremiah 29.11 this is a plaque in JoJo's room. It says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. I plan to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. I'm going to read that again because that just like gives me chills. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know what I'm doing. This is God speaking. I know what I'm doing. Like, how many times your kids are like, Mom, when is this? When is this? When are we going to do that? And you're like, dude, like, I know what I'm doing. I am the parent here. I know what I'm doing, and I have it all planned out. A plan to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for, the future you dream for, the future you desire. Why? Because he's the one who put it in there which is so crazy. And when we just stop and just like think, it's like, God, like, why am I so, like, why am I trying to do it all on my own? Why am I trying to figure out, I'm just a blob of clay. So here is what I want you to do, because y'all know me and action steps. Here's what I want you to do when you leave this live and when you're done watching this replay. Number one, Go watch the Spirit Lead Me song. Look up the lyrics. It's powerful. Um, and it really makes you just like stop and think and, and gives you yourself permission to dream. 
So go back to your dream, the one that you wrote down, I want, this is what I want. And then I want you, what I want you to do is look at that, what you want, and then ask God, what do you want me to do? And see which one of these jumps out to you. So this is going to give you some clarity on what you need to focus on, what you need to do first, what you need to maybe eliminate, what you need to start. Ask God, what do you want me to do? So you wrote down what you want. I want this. Ask God, what do you want me to do? And then rewatch this. Take some notes. If you didn't take notes, if you're doing this while, you know, you're drinking coffee, watching kids, like driving on to work, rewatch this again and take some notes. Um, take 30 minutes to really think about your dreams and just listen to see what God says. Um, Stop apologizing for the, your dreams. And then the last thing is to share it with somebody. Share it. You can share it in this group. You can go live. We give you permission to go live. Share it with this group. Share it with your business bestie. Share it with your friend, mom, husband, whoever you feel safe enough and comfortable enough to share your desires with. Because the cool thing is, is you don't have to apologize for them because this is what like, I feel God wants for us. Don't know if it's going to be in a year. Don't know if it's going to be in three months. Don't know if it's going to be in five years. But I do feel like this is where God is wanting our life to go. So I hope this was helpful, you guys. I wasn't able to read any of you guys' comments, but I am going to, once this is over, I'm going to go back and um, read them all. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope um, this was encouraging for you. I hope you got some clarity on why we're doing this. Like, why are we doing this coaching program? Why are we talking about our dreams? Um, it's important. So hope you guys like this. Let me know if you want me to continue to do things like this. Uh, I know this is different than our typical photography lessons, but, um, I just felt led to do this for you guys. So, um, hope this helps. I love you guys. And if you're in the photo Academy, I will be jumping into that group to answer your photography questions, business questions, and everything in between. Um, so if you're in there, I will see you in a minute. So I love you guys and <sighs> y'all have a great weekend. Um, have a great weekend and I can't wait to hear what you guys do with, with the coaching of this. this video and